What's up everybody, my name is Just Jared, and welcome back to another No Man's Sky video. The trade trailer has released, I can't believe it, two days it took them to release in our trailer. We thought they were going to release one every single week up until release. I guess that's not what they had in mind. So now we have the trade trailer to look at, and oh my god, it's the best one. I, I, it's my favorite trailer, they show off so much stuff. Or I'm not even going to like talk before, we're just going to go right into it. There's going to be a lot of arrows on the screen pointing into things, so look out for those. There's so much to get into. This trailer is probably the trailer that answers the most questions, but it also uh, leaves us with more questions in a way. But it does answer a lot. There's a lot of things that we see here for the first time. So let's get right into the video. So right off the bat, we do get some footage that we've seen before, so I'm just going to skip right over that. This is probably the only footage, I think, in the entire trailer that we've actually seen before. Now we get this footage right here, which is just another planet that we're landing on. Nothing super special to see. We get like a field in front of us with some plants and some rolling hills, but we don't get a lot of new things. Next is where stuff starts to happen. Okay, so right here we have the player initiating a scan. So a scan is where you use your multi-tool to scan the area to discover minerals and creatures things like that so right now in the bottom right hand corner first we have a little icon I do believe that to be the scan icon so when you scan that starts to cool down and you see the that in this clip and also when the scan kind of hits the rocks there to the right some cube uh, icons or like a cube layout kind of appears over it that will um, come up in the discussion a little bit later but also we have some question mark icons in the background there um, that actually are identified when the scan moves over it which we'll see here now when the scan rolls over the hills and all that we've got two icons that show up now the yellow is an oxide element which we will see later in this video the blue we're not sure what that could be because it doesn't really tell in the in this whole trailer there's nothing to actually pinpoint what that could be it could be a silicate element because silicate elements are blue oxide elements are yellow so but the oxide elements are actually pointed out later in this footage, whereas the blue are not. So we do not know what that is, but this planet looks really cool. There's a lot of cool plant life. We have floating islands there to the right. A lot to look at. Really pretty to see. There looks like there's some kind of building that back there in the background. Man, I just want to play. We've got this that comes up. It says gather natural resources. We've seen this gameplay before where they're actually getting some silicate. And check this out, guys. We got a round multi-tool. A multi-tool we have never even seen the looks of, even close. Last video I said there was a, a multi-tool in the last video that I said was my favorite. This definitely tops it 110%. Look at this thing. It's so, like, it's so, I don't know. It's so futuristically looking different than all the other multi-tools that we've seen. So now you definitely know, yes, multi-tools are procedural. Yes, they can look different. Here you go. So that's... That's crazy cool right there. We also have the little uh, upgrade icons. I do believe those lights kind of like how the upgrade icons were on the last video on the multi-tools to actually indicate between your laser or your grenade or your um, gun projectiles. So we have that there, but it's a really cool looking multi-tool. So as you see here, the player is mining this oxide element, which is you'll be getting iron from it. And the little icon that shows up there is the mining symbol and the little um, timer is how long it takes until it's actually mined completely at the top right hand corner We have the mining beams at 57% charge. That's kind of like the charge um, Of the actual mining laser which we'll get to later and then the planet in the background here is definitely that probably that same planet That was in the previous two trailers a really gross mushroom looking toxic one I'm sure it's the same also at the bottom left. We have that pulse symbol, which I'll point to for you guys Which nobody knew what it was before it'll come up later. We do know what that is but we will get to that. So here we see that the player is actually collecting iron from the mineral that they just destroyed. Also when this happens, we get an icon that shows up in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Now I know what this is. In the explore trailer, this icon showed up, but it was red. And I'll put that up there for you guys. It was red and I didn't know what it meant, but now I know. I think that means you're overcumbered if you're carrying too much because when this um, icon shows up, it's when you're actually gathering these materials. They're actually floating towards you. It shows up. The little bar there kind of goes up a little bit because you're picking up more materials. So this is your inventory, maybe your suit inventory probably because that's the suit icon. So 
This is inventory icon. If it's red, that means you're overcumbered and you're carrying too much. We don't know if you're carrying too much, if you won't be able to move quick like in other games, or you won't be able to run. Not sure what kind of uh, consequences being overcumbered will actually have, but now we know what that icon means. Here we have some more footage of the mining laser doing work onto this rock here. We don't get to see what mineral this is. It doesn't show it on the screen. It just shows us collecting the mineral. We get another look at a really short looking multi-tool, which is really cool. This, this planet in the background looks really awesome. The sky is bright orange and the moon or other planet there in the distance looks so cool. Not much else to talk about here. Then we get this random kind of footage here um, in space with a ship. We get, uh, once again, a different looking ship down there on the panel, one that we've never seen the look of before, even close to that. And there are some interesting ships in this trailer as well, so we'll get to those. Not much else to talk about here. Moving on, we have some more space shooting. We have the ship that's shooting this asteroid right here. We also have these metal containers around. I'm not sure if that's a um, large freighter ship, like the part of it, or what this is. Um, so that's kind of there at the top you see. I know there's a freighter to the left, so I'm not really sure if that is a freighter or if that's just some kind of canister thing that we can blow up I, I and get resources from. Not really sure, but the asteroid there we do shoot at and once the uh, asteroid breaks into pieces we see that there's red minerals that kind of flutter around that I'm sure we could fly down there and pick up. Now we get this, buy and sell exotic items from around the galaxy, okay, so that sounds awesome in itself, but to the right there we have a huge space station that's like a sphere, which looks, it just looks crazy cool. Now we're here flying into the space station, we actually get a glimpse at three different ships here, they all have the same color sheet, which is kind of weird, but uh, they all look different, they all look, you know, different in their own way, once again, procedural ships cannot wait. Now we get this footage right here. Every trade tells a story. We have doors that are opening and we're walking into, I guess, some kind of market, some kind of shop. We have an icon here. The red icon shows up a lot in this uh, footage. And I think this means like a shop in some way because it seems like it's in these space stations. There's two or three of them around. I think it's come some kind of trade station, come some kind of shop that you can purchase and sell goods at. That's why I think this icon eventually is going to end up standing for. So here we go. We get a look at this room here. There's a save point. That's what this uh, little pillar of this little area where you can stand in that's a save point we know that from previous footage we've got like a chair in here and a really pristine looking metal look to this room we've got plants and like incubators to the left there it looks really neat we've got a screen up there who knows what on it but just the lighting and stuff looks so cool in these space stations can't wait to like go in and actually explore what the possibilities that can actually be in these space stations and in these trade outposts and right here we have a Corvax, an alien NPC race. Um, looking at its tablet in its hand, we have the icon in the bottom right hand corner. That's red, it means you're overcumbered, I'm pretty sure. We got stuff all over this room. We got lights everywhere, plants everywhere. We got a door in the back there. But it's actually cool to get up close and personal with one of these Corvax. We actually get to see another one later. And we do know that they kind of are procedural in their own way. They're not in a way, so the alien races are actually created but they have a lot of different variations of themselves, which is really cool. As you see here, we got some weird mechanism in the background there on the wall. It has like a keypad onto it. We do know that there are like keypads and things where you can put codes in to unlock certain parts of uh, the world, certain parts of buildings um, to get into observatories. So maybe this is something like that. Maybe this, if you put in the right code, you can get a blueprint. We don't really know, but other than that, it looks really interesting. Here we have a multi-tool that seems to be on display. This may be one that you can actually go and purchase or one you can get from maybe doing or helping or assisting the Corvax in some sort of way. This is really cool how they have them like displayed on a wall. Maybe the ones you can actually purchase so you can actually look at them. I really love that um, in games where you can actually look at the weapons like on walls before you purchase them. That's such a cool mechanic. Hopefully that's what it is. But once again, another multi-tool that we haven't really seen the look of. This kind of looks like the multi-tool you actually get for pre-ordering um, certain copies of the game. Anyways, that looks pretty sweet. Hopefully that's how it is when you actually buy multi-tools or trade for multi-tools or actually shows them on display on like a rack. That's awesome. Now we get this upgrade and enhance your experience. And if I move the frames a little more, we get a glimpse at what is in this room. Now, if you look, it says outpost B84 galactic market terminal. So this is probably a space station galactic mar market terminal because it says galactic out in space. It would, wouldn't really make sense if it was on a planet. Um, so galactic market terminal on a space station outpost B84. Notice it says galactic, not universal. 
unfortunately we don't get to actually go inside and look in there in this trailer but still opens up the imagination for you know whatever could be there just walls and walls and walls of different multi-tools different ships on display things like that i cannot wait here we have the player interacting with some damaged machinery it says hold square to get blueprint so that's what they do so they interact with this machinery and they get wide beam adapter v1 mining beam companion unit blueprint so this is the first time we have literally seen anything this is a lot more polished than before when we've seen blueprints and things like that which has been slim to none in the past there, there's a lot has changed the inventory looks a lot different we'll get to that later but so wide beam adapter v1 you see it has a mining symbol and then a plus one there i'm thinking that means like mining power plus one now this is mining beam laser is modified to allow simultaneous mining of multiple targets widens laser impact radius so multiple targets in close proximity will receive damage during mining processes operates automatically once constructed within users multi-tool inventory so Basically, it's a mining upgrade that allows you to mine in a wider area, so you're not, you know, single, like, mining a single thing and then going right next to it, mining another one, so it kind of hits everything at one time so you can mine everything faster. So there's an upgrade, a blueprint that we first time ever seeing something like this. Now underneath there it says build to actually build this upgrade, because it doesn't just give you the upgrade, it gives you the blueprint to create the upgrade. It says build, it says you need 20 iron, 20 heridium, and 25 plutonium. Now we know iron to be a oxide element, heridium to be a silicate element, and plutonium to be an isotope element, which we will see later in the footage. On the next spot of new footage, we got a lot of ships kind of in front of you. These could be maybe um, faction ships that you're a part of and they're helping you out on your space forage because that does happen if you're um, sided with a certain faction. They can send ships that actually accompany you in space. But right here, we're mining some iron from these asteroids. You see there's crystals all amongst these asteroids that obviously have more minerals on them. So here's some more iron that we're gathering. And in the top right hand corner it shows that we're firing our bolt caster which means bolt caster is also a ship gun as well as an actual weapon our multi-tool projectile so there's that here the player is firing their photon cannon at another asteroid doesn't show the minerals we actually collect kind of a bummer but that's all right we got huge planet there in the background another one to the side so a lot of shooting asteroids is going to be done uh, in no man's sky because I guess they are rich with minerals here we get some other footage flying to a planet, not much to say about it. A very dusty planet though by the looks of it. And here we get some more footage, once again not much to say, of another hilled planet. It kind of looks like the same planet from the first spot of gameplay that we got. We got a creature roaming there and some trees in the background, but once again not much to talk about. Now we are just getting into the serious inventory stuff where the bulk of this video is going to take place. Now right here, we are mining some more rocks. We got a multi-tool, kind of like one we've seen in the previous uh, footage. We have a blue icon to the right, which we have never seen before. Not sure what that could be, but it looks like it's right behind us. We have a red icon at the top. Kind of looks like it might be an artifact icon or a portal icon. Not sure, but we've seen one like that before. Last time we saw it was an explore trailer. It was actually purple. But if we freeze the frame right here um, on this one frame, we see that the mineral we're collecting is called emerald, and it is a neutral element. The icon for neutral being green, so now we know, as well as green elements, which are neutral, we have isotope, red, silicate, blue, and oxide, yellow. In the top right hand corner we have the mining beam icon, but we also have another icon right underneath it that looks like a ball with an X in it. Maybe this is grenades, um, it could be like the land disruptor that we've seen before, maybe not, but we have not seen that icon before, so I'm not really exactly sure what that can be, but it looks like in this gameplay they are in a cave which is really cool. I cannot wait to delve deep in caves when this game comes out. Caves and underwater are going to be my main aspect of playing this game. That's what I'm going to be doing probably the most. Okay, we've got a lot to talk about here. So, we have, once again, the really cool looking round multi-tool, which we've never seen before. We have this um, icon that appears on the screen that says Sentinel Drones Alerted. So now we know when you mine too much or when you kill too much an animals on planets that sentinel drones will be alerted but you'll actually be you will be yourself alerted when they are alerted so they don't just come after you randomly like they used to in the old gameplay you would shoot a lot of creatures or mine a lot and they would just kind of show up without you you know being aware of it maybe this is an upgrade to like your suit or something that actually lets you know when they're gonna when they're gonna be attacking you or looking for you or if this is just a mechanic in the game 
um, when you start out. We're not really sure, but the red arrows that are there are pointing towards other enemy uh, sentinels, and we have mining this, once again, this rock for more iron, which is yet again an oxide element. And we have at the top right, we have the mining beam, we have one Atlas uh, star there, which is the uh, GTA-like uh, wanted system. We're at one wanted level one there, as you see by the Atlas box there lighting up. But once again, it looks like we're on this really fungi-looking planet that we've seen multiple times in these past three trailers. But, but I really want to know if this is planet right here we're seeing it at its day cycle and its night cycle or if this is all night I kind of want to know if the day cycle looks a lot different than the night um, Sean Marie has said in previous you know articles and things like that that day cycles and night cycles differ a lot sometimes so I kind of want to know what this planet looks like in day I was talking to some people um, in the comments like maybe this planet looks a lot nicer in the daytime it is entirely possible but at night it still looks pretty gross here we have some more mining of this blue looking shiny um, crystallish rock here that we don't get to see once again what we actually mine from it, which is kind of a bummer, but that's all right. Not much else to talk about here. But I do love how the minerals stand out a lot from the actual rocks. We've seen the blue rocks before previously in the last two trailers, so now we know those are actually probably rich in minerals. Once again, look at these rocks, man. They look so good. Just the shine on them, the metallic feel of them, they stand out. It really looks like that they are worth a lot to me. It looks like they, you could sell them for a lot or they're really rare because they're actually, they're really shiny, really cool looking. Cannot wait to find something like this in the game when I start. Also here, we've got some wicked looking plants. We got like a weird leaned over tree and we have some striped trees to the right there. Really looking cool. And here we go to the inventory screens. First off, we have this wicked looking ship that literally looks like a submarine. It is not a submarine though. It does say starship when we get to the inventory, but look at it. That looks so cool. It's kind of got the little um, round things on the bottom, kind of like we saw on the other ship um, in the Explore trailer that were on the top. There's just so many variations. We've seen that in these last trailers. There's been ships galore. So I cannot wait to go in and just see all the different kinds and see what everybody's actually finding, but let's move right into the inventory. So right here, we're on new Starship screen. So this is an inventory, this is kind of like a shop, I do believe, because at the bottom there, it says compare, compare with your current Starship or decline, refuse the Starship. We have the ship name at the top, it says Tenoyabu S18, maybe, that's probably the best pronunciation I can actually do. Now on the right side of the screen, we have the weapons icon, health icon, scan icon, and hyperdrive X. For some reason, there's an X there. Not sure why, but those icons right there are the upgrades or how many um, of each kind of thing you can have. So basically, there's three rings around the weapons icon. So that means you can either have three weapons equipped with the ship or you do have three weapons equipped with the ship. And then the white indicates how much you've upgraded each said weapon by going around each said ring. Hopefully that makes sense. I talked about it more in my inventory and resources video back whenever, I'll link that in the description, but it's basically the same thing. They've just changed like the colors and they've added the actual words underneath each icon so you know what they're actually talking about. Now, the bulk of this conversation is to the left of the screen, a new starship. Underneath it, we have a bunch of stuff, a bunch of upgrades, a bunch of empty slots. We have phase beam, deflector shield, pulse engine, launch thrust, deflector shield plus two, advanced cooling plus two, and photon cannon. And then all the other gray boxes are ones where you can actually add in your own thing. So I'm assuming this is a starship actually shop where you can buy and purchase other um, starships because it says you compare, can, can compare, like I said. But look at all the stuff. We have phase beam, which is obviously a weapon, a deflector shield, which is obviously a shield. Um, we have pulse engine, which is your engine. Obviously, launch thrust is your thrust. Uh, advanced cooling, uh, maybe that's like the cooldown for your phase beam. And we have photon cannon, which is another weapon. Lots of stuff to look here. Now, if you actually look at, we have phase beam and photon cannon. That's two weapons. And if you go to the icon weapons to the right, we have two white rings actually being filled because you have two weapons. So that is what that means. Now, as you can see, you can actually get scan and hyperdrive upgrades, which this ship has none of, but because they are there on the right, but they have no white rings being filled, and there's none into the left on the boxes. So, tons of stuff to look at here. Hopefully, that all made sense. We're going to move on to the next spot of gameplay. Okay, now we're in our actual inventory, and right here on the right, we see all those icons that we just saw in the previous part of gameplay. 
um, with the weapon's health skin in hyperdrive but this is actually your current ship if you look at the ship it's totally different once again have not seen one even close similar to that in any way shape or form now um, in the left we have launch thruster and pulse engine but they both have exclamation points on them and they're both red this makes me believe this kind of I kind of think that this means those are damaged um, so this is like actually repairing your ship which was never a thing before we never knew if you could repair your ship or not or if it was damaged you just had to you know live with it so this kind of makes me think that yes you can repair your ships you have launch thruster and pulse engine there they're both obviously damaged and this is repairing them right now this is kind of the process as you see in the left as well we have deflector shield and photon cannon which we saw previously as well as other gray boxes to fit more upgrades and things of the like we have some iron here in the inventory and now in this spot right here we have craft product so this is the crafting section at least of your ship inventory which i'm not sure if we've seen before i can't really remember i know we've seen the crafting in other parts of the inventory like your suit and things like that and your multi-tool but here we have a bunch of icons i don't really know what any of these mean the first one is all products second not sure third looks like technology maybe fourth energy and fifth treasure i, I mean i i don't know bunch of icons once again the icons are probably the hardest thing to really speculate about because they really could be anything um, so in this footage, the player actually highlights over the Kerite sheet. Now all here we see Kerite sheet, microdensity something, bypass chip, warp cell, and electron vapor or something. Lots of things that we have no idea what they could be, what they are. We do know the bypass chip. We know what that is. It's to actually bypass um, like alien technology, things like that. We've seen that in the previous gameplay when IGN was covering it um, for a month. So the player highlights this care right sheet, says technology component. The description reads, a lightweight metal product heavily used in ship part manufacturer. That's why I think they're upgrading the ship. Also used, or repairing the ship, excuse me. Also used in the construction of planet-side outposts and facilities of all known primary species. Crafting requirements, iron, 50 of 50. So you need 50 iron to actually craft this. And found there at the bottom it says total value 825 units so 825 units for each one of these and the dollar signs there I think indicate how valuable that is so this is kind of in the middle three dollar signs rather than five would be super valuable and one being um, not as valuable and then you can build it with X so here you see they actually do build it and it kind of shows up right there where a gray box used to be and there you have the care right sheet not sure what that actually does or how it actually improves or repairs your ship because we're not shown but there's that also before I leave this part we have the units icon at the top left that is where your units will be displayed if you did not know that previously now here quick look look at the units 139,945 units holy crap I don't know if that's a lot I know you get 10,000 for pre-ordering the game which I've said previously that I don't think that's barely anything but holy cow this guy is he is rolling in the dough so we have the exosuit upgrade panel or the exosuit inventory on the right we have health protection stamina and utilities for upgrades and in the exosuit inventory we actually have the jetpack we have protection mesh we have life support zinc carbon heridium plutonium and thamium 9. now thamium 9 we've seen um gathered from asteroids in previous gameplay Peridium, carbon, zinc, and plutonium we have seen before. Now, life support, we don't actually get to know what the life support actually says or the description of it, but that is the same pulse logo, or pulse icon, excuse me, that we see um, above the toxic on that one screen. So it's actually like a shield. We have the toxic shield, and then below it, we have the pulse icon with another kind of shield. So that must be your life support, which is another upgrade you can actually have. Super cool to see and actually find out what that means. Now as the player pans over a bit, we get to look at heridium, and this is where I get the silicate from. It says heridium, silicate element, common. So we know the elements actually have rarities like common, rare, and things like that. Element used in the creation of components vital to space exploration. Found in planetary terrain, often highlighted by holographic cubes in user's visor after local scans. Those were the cubes we saw at the beginning of the footage. Now it says heridium. Gather elements, 79 of 100. This makes me think you can actually carry 100 in each little box here. Um, and R3 is discard, where you can destroy unwanted resources. And you can also transfer your items, where it says transfer elements from your starship to your exosuit inventory directly. 
So Heridium says, element used in the creation of components vital to space exploration. This could be like ship upgrades, things like that, because that's actually space exploration. Now we get a look at carbon, which says isotope element, common, important and abundant element used to recharge weaponry, mining equipment, and exosuit life support. Basically self-explanatory. Found in planetary trees, plants, and other vegetation. Now we have seen carbon being mined or gathered from other trees in previous gameplay, so we know that is to be the truth. Once again, 100 carbon. So I'm assuming each little box of, of an element, you can actually hold 100 of each one. Maybe you can upgrade this later to hold more. Would kind of make sense if you can. Now once again, R3, you can discard and you can also transfer. Moving on. Moving on, we have Protection Mesh. Okay, so Exosuit Environmental Shielding. It's basic shielding of user from environmental hazards. Reduces user peril during planetary exploration. Micro vibrations increase electromagnetic wave reflection, thereby reducing absorption. Lots of big words, lots of science there. I'm really happy that they're actually explaining everything very scientific-like. It makes it really interesting to me. Device is charged by oxide elements, operates automatically when hazards are detected. So basically, this is your armor, I guess, protection that actually is charged by oxide, which is the yellow elements. And see here, it says energy 62%. It says charge equipment with oxide elements. That's what the battery is for that we saw in previous gameplay in the Explore trailer. Also, X is to charge it. The player actually clicks on charge, and we get this here. It shows the oxide elements in like a drop-down list. And I'm assuming you could just click on zinc to increase the percentage of... Uh, your actual protection mesh. In the next portion of gameplay right here, we get this awesome looking machinery type thing that is found, and it says beam coolant, new technology discovered, press touchpad to open inventory. Then this shows up on the screen, and it reads beam coolant system version two, mining beam companion unit. Further lengthens the time between mining beam cooldown periods. So basically that means once you use your mining beam, the cooldown period is higher, so you'll be able to use it again quicker. Additional coolant loops of liquid freemium, I guess, placed around the laser's crystal excitement chamber quickly and efficiently remove s efficiently remove systems uh, symptoms of overheating. Oh my god, so many. I can't, I wouldn't be able to read that perfectly if I tried six more times. Operates automatically once constructed within user's multi-tool inventory. So, to build this, you need 200 iridium and 100 heridium. They sound very familiar, but as you can see, the iridium is a green element, which we know of to be a neutral element. Here, there is so much to talk about. It's unbelievable. We are actually at a trade outpost or trade station in the space station. We are in an inventory where you're selling what you have. So, okay. The bottom of the screen says sell. This is where we're selling stuff. You have exosuit inventory and starship inventory, which you could select um, to sell from each of those. And right now, highlighted, um, you have Gragra, something called Gragra. It's a trade commodity. This says, gas inhaled by Viking warriors to temporarily, temporarily increase lung capacity and allow high-quality battle screens. The Viking warriors, we have never heard of. Maybe this is the warrior alien race. Who knows? It, it sounds like it would be, but it sounds awesome. The Viking warriors, Gragra. Awesome, awesome name. Um, it says you could sell it there, sell one for 1,110 units uh, per piece, 1,110.7 units per piece, excuse me. And it says sell item to the trade network. Now, if you actually go over to this whole list of things, it says 1,110.7 units per piece. Now, in parentheses, it says plus 1% galactic average. So it actually tells you you know, how much you will get for these items, and then it lets you know what the galactic average is. So right here, all these prices are higher by 1%, 4.4%, higher than the galactic average. So it's a good thing to sell your stuff here. Rather, if it was negative galactic average, then it's actually lower than the galactic average, which is so cool. The trade econ economy and the trade systems in this game are going to be just mind-blowing because all the trade networks actually coincide with each other. It's a huge trade network in each galaxy. So cool to see. Um, and at the top, well, over there, this whole list, we have iron, which sells for 14.4 units per piece, zinc, 41.7 units per piece, plutonium, 70.1 units per piece, and we have fascination bead at the top, 1980.0 per piece. Don't know what the fascination bead is, but we're going to get a description of it really quick right here. 
But first we have a zinc description. We get zinc oxide element uncommon instead of common, so it's like that next rarity. Powerful element used to recharge defensive technologies and to create and maintain many components and devices. So there's that. So it's to recharge defensive technologies like shields, things like that. I'm assuming, so that's pretty cool. If we move forward, we have... If we move forward, we have a description for iron. It says oxide element once again, but this one is common. Mind element used to build and recharge defensive technologies, same as zinc, found in rock formations and areas of geological, and we can't see the rest, unfortunately. But it looks like a less... So this is basically just like zinc. It's mind element used to build and recharge defensive technologies, but it looks like zinc maybe is better at actually recharging defensive technologies because it is more expensive, um, you can sell it for more, and it's actually uncommon rather than just common. Now if you move up to Fascination Bead, you see the player only has one out of one, which means they must be rare. It's got this green kind of label, which you have yet to see, and it says golden metal sphere used to temporarily increase the processing power of electronic life forms electronic life forms no idea what that is no idea electronic life forms what what kind of life forms are electronic you haven't seen electronic life forms except for sentinels so maybe these are dropped by sentinels maybe could be and could you actually use them to increase processing power of your own electronic life forms can you get your own electronic life forms it's open to so, so, so many just possibilities and questions i don't even know but I'm going to gather that this is probably something that is dropped from Sentinels if you destroy them. And as you see, it sells for a whopping almost 2,000 units, so they must be rare. Now right here, we got another look at a Corvax chilling out in his house. In the bottom right-hand corner, we have a message that says, Intercepted Manufacturing Facility Signal, New Product Recipe Now Accessible. No idea what this could mean. Maybe you just intercepted this manufacturing facility signal from this Corvax. Maybe you just did something for him and now you have a new product recipe accessible to you. Not sure, maybe you finished a mission for him and he's given you this as a reward. Maybe it's some kind of signal that you just randomly received and now you have to actually go look for this product recipe in a building that's accessible now. Who knows? But if you look at the, bu the building here, we've got containers in the background that are kind of lighting up because you can actually loot from them. And you have chairs and things in the background. You've just got a lot of you know, interior details that are cool to see. And if we move a little closer, you got the Corvax like staring directly into your eyes, and uh, you have another keypad in the background, which we saw previously, and we have some plants on the wall. And that is it for the trade trailer. I tried to kind of speed through this a little quicker, only because my last videos have been crazy 30 minute videos, and this there was so much more to talk about, and I didn't want it to go on for like 45 to 50 minutes. That is why I sped through this a little quicker. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. I'm pretty sure I looked through everything. I talked to people and things like that. Really touched on everything that needed to be touched on. There's so much going on right now um, with Nomad Sky, with my channel, with everybody's channel. Um, I'm getting contacted by a lot of people now, and there's just, there's just so much going on, and I'm so excited to keep this channel going. I'm done rambling. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it made sense. Once again, check out my inventory and resources video. That link will be in the description as it talks about the inventory and resources a lot in depth, kind of like this video. Um, but there's a lot of other things there that we were shown previously. Only things that have changed are like the icons and how they actually look. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for anything and everything No Man's Guy. My name has been Just Jared, a.k.a. The No Man's Guy Guy. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Until next time.